so day one, uh, Yorkshire to Heathrow, uh, short stop, then up at the crack of dawn to get to the airport tomorrow. I'll drink, I'll drink to that. Okay, that's day one done. Uh, eight hour flight, uh, five hour drive. Drink, I'll drink to that. I'm Jonah, I'm Jonah here. What's been really interesting is we've just driven through part of Clearfield County where we know there are four fracking sites in a, a small area. And what was interesting is there was very little to show that it was there. They weren't really aware of the, of the geology in that area to the extent that they needed. They didn't plan for this, they didn't have a casing in the well. They were drilling, my walls were vibrating for a year and a half. It was just like a constant vibration in my house. And then when they, they did the fracking, it's this boom, boom, boom. That's all you hear is this heart pounding boom. And it just didn't stop. Other infrastructure, like this cryogenic facility, dominates the skyline. Its size unexpected, says one local resident. We were told that there would be one 50-foot tower, a couple office buildings, some places to store some equipment, and now it's this huge, huge plant, and it just keeps getting bigger. If I go 10, there's another well there, there's another well down in there, there's another road. The trailer that you see on the road going past my house, 141 of them, plus all the heavy equipment that came in here, all the different men that came in here. Others say, I don't have that economic option and this is my home. And a lot of people really feel very rooted to this area and they, they are committed to staying here, so. Okay, so we've stopped for lunch in Mars. The more we researched into it, the worse I felt. I didn't feel better. I wanted to be consoled. I wanted to find that bit of information that it was okay and that I was overreacting. All these things that are actually a mixture in the air, our government at the moment is not regulating as a mixture. So you have this mixture that is getting inhaled and we really don't know what those effects are. So after a 16 hour day and a six hour drive from Pittsburgh, uh, we're at Shadow Brook a golf resort um, near Scranton. Uh, one thing you do have a long day, you've got to make sure the batteries and everything are charged so ready for tomorrow. Don't you see that milk white dust? So today, uh, just getting the kit ready this morning, it's about 8 o'clock and we're going to spend the morning with the Member of Parliament from the UK uh, to look at the fracking and then we're going to start moseying our way over back towards Pittsburgh with a couple of stops. Yards from the road, this is one of thousands of fracking sites in the US state of Pennsylvania. For some, it's an economic boon. For others, as Kevin quickly learned, it's unwanted at best. What's your primary objection, Vera, in terms of what, 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 what? are you seeing that you're not happy with, with well, what's going on Well, my primary here? objection is to have it close to homes like this, within a thousand feet. What could a fracking industry mean for Yorkshire? Well, Pennsylvania might certainly have some of those answers. The industry here is advanced. In this county, Susquehanna County alone, there are over 600 well pads, like this one. Right. So it's a numerous thing. See, and that, is, is that right? still happening now? With they still do it where you can't see them doing it, they'll do it. How 
This is Williamsport, Pennsylvania, home of the Little League Baseball World Series. Once a year, tourism dominates, but outside that time, its economy was suffering until the natural gas industry arrived. The natural gas industry has done a lot to revive the community, not only by bringing family-sustaining jobs within the industry itself, um, up on the rig sites and the well sites, but also in communities like Williamsport that were perhaps not thriving, but really needed an, an, an injection of new funds and new money. So this is one of the businesses which really has, has done really well. Taken advantage of this uh, natural gas. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Danny, this is one of the proprietors of this. How you doing? Hi. Tony nice Ecker, to nice to meet you. Hi, this is great. Thank you very much. We're very happy with it. Uh, there's definitely been an increase in the population size, uh, and it kind of comes and goes in waves, but it's definitely an increase in money in the area that you know, helps drive businesses like ours. By putting the liner down, anything that's released from the drill rig or the frack um, doesn't hit the ground. We basically build a one to four acre bathtub. So if anything goes wrong, then everything's contained in the bathtub and they'll bring a vac truck out to, to clean up the spill. I'm swallow, I'm swallow. Three locations in, um, just arrived in Pittsburgh after 12 hours. Um, we're gonna get some of the stuff on the laptop, start cutting, because we're gonna have to start editing some stuff tomorrow to be broadcast. Uh, but this is the hotel in Pittsburgh, and that is Pittsburgh. Not a bad view. One area the anti-fracking lobby has seized on is a potential risk to unborn babies. The man involved in that research says there's no clear link between low birth weight and fracking. But there are concerns. There was a small but significant association with a decrement in birth weight and an increase in the percentage that were small for gestational age, uh, an obstetrical approach to make an estimate of potential risks in, in, in newborns based on proximity to well. If I go 10,000 miles, if I... So we need to make sure we capitalize on those opportunities as well as the jobs that grow uh, from the development of shale resources and natural gas. Uh, we would be happy today, today to spend time talking to your delegation so that hopefully they can learn a bit of the rules of the road that we followed here in Pennsylvania to make sure we do it safely, that we do it to the benefit of our commonwealth and here in Pennsylvania, but we do it also for the benefit of our globe. The family that owns this farm have wells and a pipeline running across their land. Their grandson splits his time working on the land and working for the oil and gas industry. We raise uh, cattle and sheep for our own meat and uh, we do not have any concerns. But we're also very vigilant. We, we are good stewards of our own uh, property. You know, if they're going to do something on our farm, we ask them what it is that they're going to do and how they plan to do it and, um, you know, what safety precautions they're taking. The regulations I've seen here, the improvements they've made, do more or less parallel what we see in the UK. The key is the supervision of those regulations. Good regulations, have we got enough regulators? And we need to work very hard to make sure that we have. I've I've got, I've got the ability to be able to look people in the face and say I'm trying to find out the best for my constituents, for sure. It's a, it's a big subject. It's been a long day today. Um, we've been to three or four different locations and then we've driven for three and a half hours uh, to our hotel for the evening. Um, it is presently 10 o'clock in US time. Uh, it's 3 a.m. UK time, um, so we've got a bunch of stuff to cut. What have we just done, Danny? We've cut Sunday politics. So Sunday politics piece is gone. Now what we've got to do is we've got to trim that down for the regions for 18:30. We've also got to cut breakfast piece and we've got to cut radio piece. And then in four and a half hours time, we're going to be doing some live radio. Uh, so uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll still be awake. <laughs> Regulation has really solved that. 
So, pizza. This is looking good. Great this is time. About time. Clearly there's a lot of angst, uh, public angst, around this development. And there are unanswered questions. Even some of the, the most uh, notable public health experts uh, in the United States have said that there is not enough data to know for sure what the potential health risks are of hydraulic fracturing. Uh, so there's a, a vacuum uh, and, and what usually f rushes in to fill that vacuum is fear and mistrust. There is a passage in the Pennsylvania State Constitution which guarantees people a healthy environment, something some people here say is no longer the case. But in order to create regulation, there first needs to be evidence, and that could take years to determine if it's needed. Next tonight, what could fracking mean for our region? That's a question one North Yorkshire MP has been seeking to answer this week by visiting the US state of Pennsylvania. Kevin Hollinrate's constituency includes Kirby Misperton, where an application to frack is currently being considered. Pennsylvania already has almost 10,000 fracked wells and almost a decade of experiences to learn from. Our business correspondent, Danny Hewson, has traveled with him and sent this report.